All right, approximately 42% of Americans who want the vaccine have gotten at least one dose. Good news as we work toward uh, the hurdle of achieving herd immunity. As Dr. Lucy McBride writes in this CNN op-ed, Every morning, I walk into my office, greet my assistant, plop onto my into my desk chair, and promptly take off my mask. I then see my vaccinated patients, those who are comfortable and have normal immune systems, one-on-one -on -one in my exam room. Unmasked, my patients tell me they love it. All right, well, probably everybody is looking forward to that again. I want to bring back a Dr. Cyrus. So uh, let's talk about the, this very complicated dynamic sometimes that, that arises between friends, family members, coworkers. So um, it's no secret that people have very different ideas of what's safe for them. So when people do return to work, how should they address a coworker who perhaps has let down their guard, not taking all the precautions that others have become accustomed to? How do you handle that? Yeah, so the first thing I would consider is what is your goal and what's your relationship with the person? Is is your coworker directly in front of you not wearing a mask while you are masked up? Then your goal is to actually probably be a bit more, you know, uh, I'll say firm and say, could we please have some space? But I think if you have a little time to kind of ease into it and you notice your coworker over the past few days has been getting a little lax, then I would try to approach again, try to be non-defensive and use I statements. So this would be, you yeah. know, I feel uncomfortable and a little bit unsafe when you are over there with your mask on. So if that's one way that you can do it and have a follow up, which means that so maybe I'm going to be sitting over here a little bit further away from you. But I would try to separate, you know, this this tension that you might be feeling about people because they have different values and not wearing their mask and try to come at them is is really what your goal is to try to get them to mask up. So again, keep it focused on you and explain how you feel when they don't wear that mask. That way you're not attacking them personally and you're using yourself and the emotions that you are going through, which might actually help you appeal to them as mm -hmm. a coworker. And again, this depends some on the relationship that you might have yeah. with them and what your goal might be in the immediate and sort of in that long or short term. Oh, that's very polite and, and, and lovely. I, I'm smiling so much because I was envisioning at first when you talk about eye statements, I'm like talking with your eyes because that's what we're all doing nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, our eyes can say a whole lot, but I get it. All right, so so next weekend, you know, families are, are going to gather for Mother's Day weekend. So how do you address a family member who has not been vaccinated and, and wants to be in the company of everybody else and others who have been vaccinated? This is a really good question that's coming up quite mm. a bit with some of my patients and even my friends. And I think, as you mentioned, we all have different boundaries when it comes down to our sense of safety. I think the fact of the matter is, is that you can get sick and die from COVID. So if someone who is not vaccinated is trying to come over to the house to celebrate Mother's Day, mm. that's a pretty clear statement to say, we don't wanna get anybody sick. Right. And so I think if this was a, a family member of mine, we're, we're finding that folks are having to actually put down boundaries, which is, it's tough. Yeah. Maybe you don't say a lot of no's in your family. Um, maybe conflict is not really your thing, but it's actually, it's something that I'm finding that folks are having to do more often, which is setting that boundary and actually having that conversation. So again, I would go back to using I statements. I would feel horrible if you came and got sick from one of us, if you're not vaccinated, or mm -hmm. I would feel horrible if you came and our mother got sick because you were here. I would never let myself live that down. So we're just thinking about the safety of everyone, which means that maybe you don't invite them. And if they say they're gonna show up anyway, how do you not let them in the house? Oh, I've heard boy. this from a, a friend who has a partner who doesn't wanna get vaccinated. So maybe you say, you can't come with me to this, or you can't sleep in the room. But if they, if I love you and I just wanna do this for my safety, they should understand that. Mm. People are going to have to feel uncomfortable for a while, it seems, because there is still a lot to consider. All right, so now that the pandemic is improving a, a bit, you know, many people are, are adjusting to old routines. You know, how should people address anxiety related to their lifestyle once again changing? So I would once say normalize anxiety. If you don't have any anxiety about getting back to real life, then that's probably a little more abnormal. <laughs> so that's First thing I want to say is that of course you're going to have anxiety because first of all we seem like we're getting back to normal but who really knows yeah. how this is all going to play out so I would I would one just say be uncomfortable experiencing a range of emotions and it's going to come down to what's best 
for you. So if you know that if you go to that baby shower that you're going to have a panic attack, maybe it's best for you not to go to that baby shower, even if you use a two out of three rules, right? It, yeah. it comes down to how you are feeling in your mental health. I would also, though, encourage folks to realize how much um, freedom maybe they can achieve once getting vaccinated and being able to go back to normal. For example, I have a friend named David who's just finishing up vaccinations and going to a restaurant for the first time tomorrow. I'm pretty sure he's gonna enjoy that drink that he's gonna have, but probably be a little nervous about maybe the chef or the waiters, are they mm -hmm. vaccinated? There are a lot of questions which may not have come up when you were at home getting takeout. So I would just encourage folks to maybe stick their, their, their huh. toe in the pool and see how it feels. And if it's a little too much for you, that means the next time you try this, maybe you stay mad the entire time. So I think there will take some mm. trial and error and, and moving at your own pace. And that's going to depend on how risk averse you may or may not be, which might be an individual process for folks. And it gets a little right. more complicated if you have family members. But I think at the end yeah. of the day, you need to prioritize your mental health and how comfortable you feel or else you're not going to have a good time anyway. Right. Oh, this makes so much sense. I mean, there's so much anxiety, uh, you know, entering into it, being in the midst of all these changes, pandemic, and then trying to exit it too. Okay. So for, how about for your kids real quick? I mean, they're they are feeling some pint size anxieties as well. Maybe worried about, oh, my gosh, is it really going to be safe for me to go back to school, even though they're all telling me it's OK without a mask? How do you help them? And we're talking about children. I think yeah. one thing to do is, again, is to normalize it. Feelings are normal. I think one thing that's happened during this pandemic is one, we all know we're going through this. I, if I'm thinking mm -hmm. about statistics that are showing that compared to 2019, the rate of anxiety, depression, and increase in substance use, even for youth especially, have gone up to about four in 10, which means out of 10 of your friends, about four of you yeah. aren't feeling so comfortable or oh. going through something right now, most likely related to the pandemic. So what I would say is normalize. Let's start talking about what these feelings mean. So if your child is saying something like this to you, you can normalize and say, you know, well, sometimes I feel anxious too. What might make you feel more comfortable? And then maybe the next, once you get an answer to that, you can say, well, how much what would uh, what kind of risk would you be willing to take? What if we go to school one day a week? Kind of come up with a compromise, mm. but really mm -hmm. be okay, okay with whatever answer is given to you. And oh, I love that. it. We needed all this. I'm already feeling my anxiety level go <laughs> down a little bit just because I got a chance to talk with you all, Dr. Kelly Cyrus, uh, and also Dr. Peter Hotez, Dr. Celine Gounder. Thanks so much to all of you. I know you have helped so many of us so much. Really appreciate it. All right, and everybody at home and wherever you are, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Frederica Whitfield. The CNN Newsroom continues right after this with Gemma Costa.